Previously, I showed you how to create this little circuit, which after powering it, creates a modified square wave at its outputs. We should not, but can step this voltage up to mains voltage through a transformer, and thus use this setup as a crude mains voltage inverter. Only problem is, that the stepped up voltage at the transformer output still looks nothing like the sinusoidal mains AC voltage we are familiar with. That is why many viewers asked me whether I could showcase a technique called SPWM to create a pure sine wave inverter that, like the name implies, outputs a pure sine wave. Now of course such a modification is definitely possible, but it does not change the fact that my circuit features no feedback system as well as a couple of other important safety features. Luckily though, another viewer asked whether I could have a look at the EGS002, which is a cheap pure sine wave inverter module, which comes with a voltage, current and temperature protection, and apparently even a feedback system. So in this video, let's find out how SPWM is used to synthesize a pure sine wave, and afterwards let's try to build an inverter based on the EGS002 to find out whether it is a decent DIY alternative for a commercial inverter. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your Gerber files today to order high quality PCBs for ridiculously low prices and make your projects look more professional. First off, what does SPWM stand for? Well, the S stands for sinusoidal and PWM for pulse width modulation. Through pulse width modulation, we create a pulse wave whose frequency we can change as well as the on time of the pulse, also known as the duty cycle. So by varying the duty cycle, we alter the average voltage of the pulse. For example, with 100% duty cycle, we would have around 4.95 volts. With 50%, the half of that, and with 25%, a quarter of the maximum voltage. Now a sine voltage is basically an analog waveform, whose different voltage levels we can reconstruct with different duty cycles. For example, Let's use the 16-bit timer 1 of the Arduino for this task. With a prescaler of 1 and a counter limit of 1600, we would get a pulse wave with a time period of 0.1 milliseconds, which coincidentally fits 100 times in one wave of the main sine voltage. So next, we have to divide our half sine wave into 100 pieces and calculate their voltage values in correlation to the amplitudes, for which we can easily use a graphical calculator. Last but not least, we convert the 100 percentage values into timer counter values by multiplying with the counter limits, and subsequently store those values in a lookup table in the code of the microcontroller. During the microcontroller operation, the timer will then increase slash decrease the duty cycle of the pulse wave after every period according to the lookup table. But since setting up the timer properly is not that simple, let's rather use this well-written Arduino Admel SPWM code from GitHub. After uploading the code to an Arduino and hooking up its PWM pin 9 to an oscilloscope, we can observe a practical SPWM signal with a slowly increasing slash decreasing duty cycle and a fundamental PWM frequency or carrier frequency of 10 kHz. This SPWM signal along with its 10 milliseconds shifted counter SPWM signal on pin 10 can now be applied to the H-bridge, but make sure that the diagonal opposing MOSFETs get the same signal. This way, our attached load gets powered by an AC SPWM signal, which obviously is not a pure sine wave yet. For that, we have to attach an inductor and capacitor in this configuration to form a low-pass filter, 
which, like the name implies, filters out the high carrier frequency of the PWM signal and thus turns it into a more or less pure sine wave. And with that, you are now familiar with SPWM and should understand that a practical hardware implementation of such a technique can be a bit daunting. But thankfully, we got our Chinese SPWM driver boards, which will hopefully help us to achieve good results. Honestly speaking though, I was quite happy with the PCB quality of the module itself, as well as the quality of all the solder joints, which is a good start. And while the datasheet of the module is only 6 pages long, it gave me all mandatory information, even without broken English. The board consists of an EG8010, which is an ASIC, so application specific integrated circuit, that manages the feedback system for the voltage, current and temperature, and most importantly spits out 4 SPWM signals with a rather high frequency of 23.5 kHz. Additionally, the board features an LM393 op amp for the current feedback functionality and two IR2113 MOSFET drivers to drive 4 and channel MOSFETs. Just according to those facts and the schematic, the board did sound promising. The only thing we have to do is to add a couple of complementary components. Which brings me to a PCB that was advertised alongside the module. It is called the EGP 1000 watts and as you can see forms the circuit for the complementary components. So I went ahead and ordered it, which is where all the problems started. The first thing I noticed about the board were its big traces. Which is not a bad thing though, because it needs to be able to handle 1000 watts. But what I didn't like was the fact that even though the board is big and has tons of space on it, they still utilized the smallest of SMD components, while a complete THT mounting would have been possible. But nevertheless, the next problem was that the only datasheet slash manual I found for the PCB was in Chinese. And even worse, it seems like a couple of component calculations were explained in it. But coincidentally, I found another eBay seller, which at the time promised an English manual for the PCB. But the translated manual I received was such a joke that they apparently do not offer it anymore after I complained about it. So what I did as a result was utilizing all the datasheets I found and a bit of my gathered electronics knowledge to determine what complementary components the PCB requires. Afterwards, I sourced all the components and successfully ordered them. And as soon as I received them, I started soldering all the SMD ones to the board, which would have been much easier if they were a bit bigger or just simply THT. Anyway, after I soldered on the full bridge rectifier, which was a bit too small since I got the wrong one because there was no information about it, I moved on to the THT components which were quicker and easier to solder. And once I added a solder bridge to a jumper, so that everything is powered by only one 12 volt supply, I added the filter capacitor and inductor and was basically done with the circuit. So I inserted the module and connected the power, which to my surprise did not lead to an explosion, but instead the LED on the module simply lit up. And by having a look at the outputs, we can see the filtered pure sine wave with an RMS voltage of around 8.5 volts. That means we also require a transformer for the circuits, which I hooked up in the same way as I did it with my modified square wave inverter. And after also adding a small load, we can see that everything seems to work. But if we look at the voltage form, we can see that the shape is not that pleasant to look at. The reason is that we are only half done, since the output keeps shutting down after a certain time while the module LED flashes 4 times. According to the datasheet, that means there's an undervoltage problem, which is obvious since there exists no feedback from the high voltage side of the transformer yet. So according to the Chinese datasheet, 
I removed the capacitor and inductor, added a wire bridge for the inductor, soldered the capacitor to the transformer's high voltage sides and connected the feedback circuit. And with crossed fingers I powered up the system, which to my own surprise did not blow up, but still featured the shutdown problem. But after adjusting the potentiometer, the circuit finally worked correctly and the waveform on the high voltage side did also look acceptable and actually pretty perfect without any load attached. But then again the achieved voltage was never 230 volts like mains voltage. For that I would have to increase the input voltage or use a different transformer. I have no interest in doing that though, because even without a load, the circuit draws around 20 watts while doing nothing, which is pretty terrible. There also exists an LCD for the system, but that also only delivered wrong values, at least for me. So all in all, the module and PCB seem to do their job acceptably well, and I believe that there is a lot of room to tweak the circuit. But then again, due to the non-existent English manual, that is very hard to do. And with that being said, I hope you learned a bit about SPWM, pure sine wave inverters and most importantly about the fact that you should never trust Chinese products without a proper manual in English. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.